An illustration can be helpful in understanding the A1 problem. We have a string of five beads uh, pulling on both ends so that there's some tension T throughout the string. And we displace the middle bead one centimeter above the original line of the string. The beads are separated by 10 centimeters. So I've exaggerated the vertical scale. The slope is actually quite mild, uh, a slope of one part in 10, one part of rise, 10 parts of run. Uh, and we postulate a tension of 10 newtons. And we want to find the net force on the middle bead as a result of this configuration with this tension. Now, we can assume that this tension is the same throughout the string. In reality, displacing this uh, bead here is going to increase the tension uh, slightly. But it's going to be a very slight increase, less than a 1% increase in the tension for a one centimeter displacement. So we're not going to worry too much uh, about the fact that this tension is actually maybe uh, one or 2% higher than the 10 newtons. We'll just <coughs> assume that it's 10 newtons throughout. So what would be the force on the middle bead? You should stop and do this uh, before you continue. Okay, hopefully you've done that. Hopefully uh, you were able to draw a diagram that shows the forces on the bead. If you haven't, uh, just the part in white, you know, clearly we have a tension that goes down this way and a tension to go, well, down and to the left, down and to the right. And that tension is going to have components uh, and some of those components are going to be uh, parallel to the original line of the line. Some are going to be perpendicular. And that, that, of course, we can calculate components in any direction we like, uh, but the obvious directions are the direction of the line and the direction of the displacement. So what are the components of the tension in those two directions, uh, of the two tensions? We have a tension here, a tension here. What are their components? Again, if you haven't worked that out, you ought to do it before I explain it. Okay, well, you've already seen this much of the diagram. In red, I've sketched vectors representing the tensions. And of course, I've still exaggerated the vertical scale somewhat. Let's observe a couple of things. Because of the small slope, there's not much difference in the length of uh, this piece of string. Uh, the, the, the string connecting these two beads uh, and the length they would have it would have if the bead was right here. Uh, by the similarity of uh, triangles and in a way that uh, at this point in the course you should be very well versed uh, in that sentence construction but we'll live with it. <coughs> the uh, X component of the tension doesn't differ much at all from the actual tension in the string. Okay, there's, again, less than a 1% difference between the X component of the tension and the tension in the string. And we're going to use small angle approximations and assume then that the X component of the tension is equal to the tension. That has a couple of implications. One is, uh, well, let, let, let me back off from that statement. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So uh, the X component of the tension is, the X component of the magnitude of the tension is approximately equal to the magnitude of the tension. The Y component of the tension is going to be uh, in the same proportion to the tension in the, uh, in the string as the displacement is to the distance here. Actually, as the displacement is to the length of the string. But again, the length of the string and the 10 centimeter distance are practically equal. So uh, that ratio is just 0.1. We have one centimeter to 10. So that the magnitude of the Y component of either of these tensions, tension to the left or tension to the right, is one tenth of the X component of the tension, which is one tenth of the magnitude of the tension. Uh, magnitude of the tension being 10 newtons, we find that the uh, net force on this bead is the sum of the Y component of the tension to the left and the Y component of the tension to the right. Those are both equal to 0.1 times the ma magnitude of the tension. The magnitude of each of these is a tenth of the magnitude of the tension so that when we sum those up we get 
two tenths the magnitude of the tension, which works out to two newtons, and it's directed downward. The next question asks how far, or what, how, by how much will the velocity of this middle bead change in the next tenth of a second? Well, it turns out the acceleration is pretty high, and a uh, tenth of a second was too long of a time interval to use. So I've changed that uh, to a millisecond. So if you're working from the current version of the document, it's no longer a tenth of a second. It does say 0 0.001 second, a millisecond. So the question is, how much does the velocity of this bead change in that time? Again, you should pause and work that out if you haven't already, or at least think through how you would work it out. But what we have on that bead is a net force of two newtons on a five gram mass, 0 0.005 kilograms, and that very, in a very straightforward manner tells you you have 400 meters per second squared of acceleration for this middle bead. So that in a thousandth of a second, it looks like I've done that calculation on the, uh, on the next board, but I'll go ahead and do it here. Um, Four hundred meters per second squared times 0 0.001 second equals 0.4 meters per second. Now, in a thousandth of a second, how far uh, will the bead move? We can talk about that also, and we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, also, we note that on the bead to the right or the bead to the left, we have a one newton tension force. Okay, or one newton net force. On this bead, we have the tenth of a newton pulling up and to the left, equal and opposite to the point one newton. We have, uh, I'm sorry, we have, a, we have a ten newton force pulling to the left with a vertical component or y component of point one newton, equal and opposite to the vertical component, uh, the point one newton downward vertical component exerted by the tension in this string on this mass. Okay, and so we have a 200 meter per second squared uh, acceleration as a result of that one newton force. And that's going to give us a 0.2 meter per second change in velocity.